Hello, thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we are going to be looking at a nice little portable shortwave receiving antenna, an active loop antenna, the Texan AN48X. Let's check it out. Thanks for clicking again on the Ham Radio Crash Course. You know, less than 50% of people that watch my channel are actually subscribed. So if you're enjoying the content, please give me a thumbs up and clicking that button. Click that bell too, because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks very much. All right, so the AN48X, I keep in a little baggie like this, and it, it pretty much goes everywhere where I take my C-Crane single sideband Skywave. It is a interesting antenna. It's much maligned in the shortwave radio community because it can be a little finicky, and I'm gonna show you how it operates, what it does, how it functions. Now, what makes this compelling is not just that, you know, it's a receive antenna, and that's, that's nice, and it's super compact. Those are all good things. What's compelling about it is the kit that it comes with. This little antenna is usable by my FT3DR, which is wide-banded ham radio receiver. Obviously, my shortwave receiver, it's got devices to connect to that. It's got devices to connect to a native uh, antenna connector, any shortwave radio with an actual antenna plug. This will work with. And I've gotten some pretty interesting results, but right up front, this is a finicky antenna. It's a loop, however, right, of course. So loops inherently are kind of finicky for the tuning. And because it's used on short wave and long wave and medium wave, it can get a little interesting tuning this thing up. So let me flip the camera over and show you what comes in the kit, how you use it, and I'll show you examples of what you can do with it on the air. Okay, so the kit, and this pen's here for scale, the kit comes with the main body of the loop, an extendable kind of arm for stretching out the wires of the main body, the main control, which is here for your signal level and your frequency tuning, and this connects in line to your radio, uh, from the antenna extension cable into your radio via a host of really, really nice connectors. This little kit has so many connectors in here for connecting to just about any radio you want. And then lastly, it comes with this little uh, kind of a tripod for holding your radio. I've got it the wrong way. Nope. Last time, I'll get it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like that. And this little tray, you actually will use a ferrite connector here and you mount your radio on it. And this is for doing AM, which I'll, I'll show that in a second. This is also pretty cool. Let me clear this off and show you what's in this connector kit because this is pretty well thought out. All right, so walking around this, you have a alligator clip lead that connects to the control box. This would be for a ground lead connection if you wanted to connect to some ground wire and then the actual aerial. Next to that, same kind of thing, connects to the control box, but then a BNC connector. So this could go into your FT3DR or Handy Talkie that has a BNC connector um, or any radio that had a BNC like the 705. You have an RCA jack connector and then you have this cool little ferrite connector. And this is for radios, when you want to improve the AM capability, a lot of shortwave radios have an internal uh, ferrite antenna wrapped around on the inside. And this goes uh, into this little case here, like this. It lays flat like that to match where the ferrite is in your radio that you have lying on front. So if you have a radio like the Skywave here, the ferrite's pretty much right here in the back. You would just lay this on top like that, and then you would connect into your control box, and that's how you get better AM reception on a radio such as the Skywave. And then it has a suction cup mount to mounting this on the glass in your home or office, and a simple little loop connector for clipping on to a branch or whatnot, and then you hang the antenna off of that. So setting up this antenna is, is really quite simple. You just take the loop, stretch it out. Here's the main body of the loop. And I have a hook uh, that I've set up above my head here. And I'm gonna take the extension. It's basically like 
the aerial for a shortwave radio, but it's got little hooks on each end. And you just stretch this out as far as it'll go, like a so, and then you simply connect the little hooks to the wire. And you don't really have to get that fancy. It's gonna look more like an upside down kite than uh, an actual loop. You can go in there if you wanted to and you could loop the wires around to get it to uh, get more stable. I have not had really, I have not found that that does much to change how well it receives or not. So I just hang it up like this and where it kind of settles, I just leave it. And then on the body of the little loop here, they've got indicators for SW, MW, and LW, shortwave, medium wave, and long wave. So I'm usually on shortwave when I'm listening because I'm listening to amateur radio. So I just leave it there. Then you just take your extension wire. Oh, this thing whacks me in the face some more. And it's a, a really long extension wire. This is like a, almost 20 feet or so of wire. Pull enough of it off that you're gonna need put some Velcro straps on here just to make sure it doesn't become too much of a mess. Connect that to the bottom here. And then on your control box, it simply connects in on the other side and you turn it on. And there's a little red indicator light to tell you when it's on. To give you a bit of an example here, the aerial is up, stock configuration. That's WWV. Should be anyway. Can't hear it. No copy. Let's uh, bring the aerial down. Bring in my Texan antenna. And clip the lead here to the aerial. And you can see it picked up a little bit of crosstalk on that. Let's see if we can take out the crosstalk. The trick with this is it's lots of slow moves. Move really slowly, and then you, uh, you'll have less of a problem. All right, quite a bit more interesting. Let's, uh, let's try this with the 705. I have the BNC connector rigged up here. Let's see if we can tune it in a little bit closer, and you're going to be able to see it on the screen here. In fact, let me put the RF gain up a little bit more. Okay, watch this. Already gone. See that? Now, you can see I've got this opened up to 500K. Watch this. If I just pick this up and I slide it ever so slightly, you can totally null out. It's not, it's not resonant anymore. And you can see I've got some RFI up here that uh, is pretty bad. But I can bring it right back in. Now we can use that to go down the band further if we want to explore some other areas. So with right here. Let's slide further down here and see what happens. All right, now I'm using the power here power the, the loop control, the signal level, to raise and lower it as needed. We're all doing the same thing, literally going to the walls. And, and so sort of that's the point, is that we're, we're starting to get all of these transmitters in our, uh, 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 these wireless devices all around us. They're all transmitting somewhere. Really apropos for this, uh, to, find, to find this in the 
the radio. Oh, of course, coast to coast AM. Uh, don't uh, don't strike my video, please. I mentioned before the FCC has a standard that was done 30, 30 years ago. Let's get out of here. Here is a little local uh, shortwave. Let's tune it in. So the AN48X is a compelling little piece of kit. It obviously packs up pretty light. You can do some pretty impressive things with it on the receiving side, so long as you're patient enough to take it and operate with it and tweak it and fool around with it. And of course, knowing uh, what you're gonna have to deal with going in because it is a loop, you're gonna have to be retuning it a lot. It runs off of two AAA batteries. It lasts a really long time. I've, I've had this in here for a couple of months, these two batteries. And I use it often. I use it uh, when I'm in the office at work, and I use it when I'm out and about, and I use it in the home too. Sometimes I'll just suction cup it to a window, and I'll just leave it on, and I'll, and I'll listen to radio for a while. Obviously, the key things about using a loop antenna like this is that you're going to have to know the frequencies that you're operating on or plan to operate on, because you're going to have to set your radio to those frequencies and then tune the antenna to get the best receive capabilities. You actually can use this with an SDR. It'll work just fine on an SDR, assuming that you have the right connectors to make it work. You're going to have to step down the little, um, you know, 3.5 millimeter jack into something that'll go to like SMA or something like that. And there's a multitude of devices that are on the market that will do that. But once you have that, then you got a cool little device that you can actually see the waterfall display when you're adjusting it as it's coming up and moving around, and then you'll know kind of where you're at. It's priced. In, I think pretty fairly, it goes for about $25 to $35 on eBay is where I've found them, where I got mine. And for the price, for the size, it's a fun little quirky thing that you might yourself enjoy. Packing it along with your FT3DR or a wide-banded HT seems like a pretty good idea as an extra layer of preparedness. That seems like a good way to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Post in the comments below if you carry a shortwave radio with you or if you have a wide-banded VHF, UHF capable handy talkie that can go down into the shortwave bands. Do you carry an antenna to be able to listen on those frequencies if you ever needed to do so? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post them below. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Click that bell because I do live stream every 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until you see me again, thanks for watching. See ya.